Wits as Schools Match Wits, America's longest-running television quiz show. Proudly brought to you by Raymore and Flanagan Furniture. And now here's your host, John Barron. And good Saturday night, one and all. Thank you so very much for joining us tonight. And a rounding round of applause to our studio audience. Thank them for being here as well. Uh, we have a great match tonight. That's because one of our team is here looking for that all-important third win, hoping to become the sixth team to retire and join us in the playoff. Let's see if that will happen. The school I'm referring to, of course, is East Longmeadow High School. Their competition tonight, the Willison Northampton School from East Hampton, Massachusetts. East Longmeadow High School won the toss. Let's get right to the program. What will be tonight's first category, East Longmeadow? Math and Science for 30. Math and Science will get us off to a good start tonight. All right, think quickly now. The square of one half is what percent of one half. Fifty percent. Fifty percent. You've got it. You're in East Long Meadow. All right. Let's test your mental sharpness. Ten points for his correct answer. If a 13-foot ladder is placed against a building five feet from its base, how far up the wall does the ladder reach? I'm sorry? Twelve feet. You've got it. Jump right in. When the quantity x plus one is cubed, what's the coefficient of x squared? Three? Three is right, yes. And try this. If a certain line makes a 45-degree angle with the x-axis, what's the slope of that line? One. One, of course. Clean sweep to start at East Long Meadow as they have their past two matches. Willis and Northampton, how will you answer? Um, sports and entertainment for 30, please. All right. He's won five NCAA Division I championships most recently in 2004, as coach of UConn women's basketball. Who? Gino Ariyama. Gino Ariyama is correct. You're in. Let's go to the screen early tonight. Thank you, Judy Priest. Well, what do you know about women's college basketball? For five points, match each pro with her college. Rebecca Lobo. UConn. UConn, a uh, Southwick, Massachusetts native. Lisa Leslie. USC. USC is right, yes. Diana Tarazi. Yukon. Also Yukon. How about Sue Bird? Yukon. Again, Yukon. Shamik Holdsclaw. Tennessee. Tennessee is right. How about Cheryl Swoops? USC. No, that would be Texas Tech. You know your college basketball. Nicely done, Williston. East Long Meadow, we're back with you, please. General knowledge for 30. Who on January the 15th, 1915, in San Francisco said, once again, they said, once again, the famous words, Watson, come here, I want you. Was that Sherlock Holmes, Thomas Edison, Alexander Graham Bell, or Woodrow Wilson? Alexander Graham Bell. There you go, yes. It marked the inauguration of the transcontinental telephone service. As clear as a bell, find the word bell, B-E-L-L, -L, in each answer for five points. It's another word for campanile. <laughs> bell tower. An alloy of copper with 20 to 25 percent tin. <laughs> bell metal. Sylvia Plath's autobiography, The What? The Bell Story. The Bell Jar. Paralysis of muscles on one side of the face. <laughs> Bell's Palsy. The paintings of this U.S. artist include Stag at Sharkey's, 1909. George Wellesley Bellows, and try this. These special features are not necessarily, but are often incorporated in a product to make it appear more desirable. They're not necessary, but often incorporated. Bells and whistles? That's it. Whistles and bells, bells and whistles. You got it. All right, Williston, please. Grab bag for 30. If you find yourself reading a copy of the Daily Pravda, 
hot off the press. That's P-R-A-V-D-A. -A. You'd most likely be in what country? Germany, Russia, Poland, or the Netherlands? Poland? No, a chance to capitalize East Long Meadow. Netherlands? No, we'll toss it out. Russia. It's the daily newspaper for Russia. We'll stay with East Long Meadow, please, for the right filter. science for 25. All right, here's an interesting question. Of the following fictional characters, which one has the diet highest in vitamin A? Popeye the Sailor, the Cookie Monster, Bugs Bunny, or Jughead Jones? Bugs Bunny? Yes, of course. He eats carrots high in vitamin A. To the screen again, please, Judy. Thank you. Take your vitamins and minerals now. I'll name a vitamin or mineral for five points. What is its best source? Now keep in mind that you may use each choice on the screen only once. Calcium. Milk. Correct. Vitamin E. Egg yolks. No, lettuce. Vitamin D. Seafood. No, egg yolks. Iodine. Seafood. Seafood. Yes. How about vitamin K? Bananas. Bananas. Bananas is right. Yes. All right. We go back to Willis and Northampton, please. History for 30. No fooling. On April the 1st, 1960, the United States launched Tiros 1, the world's first what? Computer network, weather satellite, manned space probe, or cable television network? Weather satellite? Is correct. You've got it. All right. No fooling. Each of these questions concerns an event which occurred on April the 1st in a given year. Ten points. On April 1st, 1836, this English naturalist arrived at the Cocos Islands aboard the Beagle. Darwin. Yeah. Darwin, yes. On April the 1st, 1934, this famous bank robbing duo, whose surnames were Parker and Barrow, murdered two policemen in Grapevine, Texas. Bonnie and Clyde. Bonnie and Clyde is right. And try this. On that date in 1924, this Nazi party leader was sentenced to five years in prison for leading the Beer Hall Putsch. Adolf Hitler? Adolf Hitler is right, yes. Okay, East Long Meadow, please, we're back with you. Um, sports and entertainment for 25. Sports and entertainment. Willison has the five-point lead. You'd associate the phrase, inside of the foot kick, with soccer. The phrase, inside pass, with track and field. With what sport would you most likely associate the phrase, inside out swing? Golf? No, a chance to capitalize Williston, do you know? Baseball. Baseball is it, yes, of course, baseball. They have the capitalization. Let's go to the screen, Judy, thank you. Not in, but out now. With what sport would you most likely associate each of these out, O-U-T, phrases? Five points. An outfielder. Baseball? Yes. An out-of-bounds play. Basketball? Correct, yes. The Outland Trophy. Cricket? No, college football. Best interior lineman. An outswinger. Boxing? No, that'd be cricket. And how about to outpoint an opponent? Cricket? No, that's boxing. And with that, folks, that ends our first round. I'll be back with the dumb luck round after some opening words from our sponsors, including Raymore and Flanagan. Come on back. And quite a lovely contest going on today. Back and forth all the way, the way we enjoy it. Can't say as much that the students feel that way, but I hope you folks at home are enjoying the contest. Good match tonight. 65-50 in favor of Williston, Northampton. Let's first get acquainted with the challengers from East Hampton, Williston, Northampton School. We are delighted to welcome junior Katie McCauley to the program. Hi, Katie. How are you? Fine, thank you. How are you? Good. This past summer, um... As a research assistant, you participated in a rather unusual study. Tell us about that. Yes, we were studying Pavlovian conditioning in antlions. <laughs> Did you get that, folks? <laughs> Pavlovian conditioning in antlions. Now, that's an insect that burrows in the ground? Yes, yes, they build pits, and uh, food falls in, and they trap the food there and eat it. That's fantastic. Good for you. Keep it up. <laughs> Senior next is Emily uh, Gabranski, uh, returning member to the team. Welcome back. How are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm fantastic. Thank you. Uh, you were a field intern. 
Yes, I was. Um, I was a field inter intern this summer for the NASA Origins of Life program. So I got my own um, telescope. I got to view the night sky. It was really fun. Good for you. Keep it up. Next is also a returning member of the team, third year on the team. Welcome back, Helen O'Keefe. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. Good. You uh, are quite involved in sports. Tell us about that. Yeah, um, I play football, wrestling, and softball at my high school. Fantastic. And you have someone else to introduce tonight? Yes, I'd like to introduce our art alternate, Margaret Conant. Okay, thank you for doing that. And now we welcome uh, junior Sam Curtis. You're also involved in sports. Yep, I do three sports, cross-country, squash, and track. Fantastic. Tracks and cross-country is doing well. Oh, yes. The past two years, we've come in second in New England. Good for you. Keep it up, young man. And Claire Stifler is the coach for Willis and Northampton. I welcome them to the show. Let's get now to get reacquainted with the folks from East Longmeadow High School. We mentioned earlier they are going for that all-important third win. I hope to make it to the playoffs. We welcome back Max Schoenberg, Holly Schneider, A.J. Reskowski, and Ian Turner. Good luck to you folks. Let's get right back to the program, shall we? Oh, a team coached by Mr. Patrick Carey. Excuse me, Patrick. I didn't mean to uh, not acknowledge you. Willis and Northampton, after the capitalization, your rightful turn. We are in the dumb luck round, so please just give me a number and I'll tell you what you've selected. Number two, please. Number two. Literature for 15 points. If you're a bibliophile, you know that these buildings, which were endowed by Andrew Carnegie, bear the motto, let there be light. Libraries. <laughs> Libraries. Libraries, yes, bibliophile, a lover of books. Okay, you're in. More famous mottos now for five points. Translated, this nation's motto is liberty, equality, and fraternity. France. France, yes. Liberté, égalité, fraternité, uh, fraternité, excuse me. And for 10 points, established in 1945, the motto of this organization is, let us beat swords into plowshares. The AFL? No, the United Nations. The United Nations. Not too much damage done on the capitalization. East Longmeadow, we're back with you. Uh, 17. Number 17. That'll be social studies uh, for 20 points. It also happens to be our bonus category, a chance for bonus points, a total of 30 points available. At more than four times the size of Bermuda, the King Khalid Airport is the world's biggest. You'll find it in what Middle Eastern nation? Syria, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, or Egypt? Saudi Arabia? Yes, near Riyadh. You are right. You're in. Superlative geography now, 10 points. Known as the Huang Ho in China, it's the world's muddiest river. The Yangtze? No, I'm sorry, the Yellow River. It gets its name from the yellow silt it carries. And at 2,293 miles in length, it's Europe's longest river and Russia's principal waterway. Is this the Moldau, the Vistula, or the Volga? The Vistula? No, I'm sorry, it's the Volga River. But still, there's a chance for 10 bonus points. The capital of Saudi Arabia is Riyadh. For 10 points, please spell Riyadh. R-I-Y-A-D-H. Correct. You got the 10 bonus points. Nicely done, East Longmeadow. Back to Willis and Northampton. Your number, please. Number 13. 13. Lucky number 13 happens to be tonight. General knowledge for 15 points. The International Phonetic Alphabet uses two letters of the Greek alphabet to qualify. Name either letter. Theta? No, I'm sorry, a chance to capitalize. East Longmeadow, do you know? Sigma? No, Alpha and Delta. We'll toss it out, no capitalization there, but we'll stay with East Longmeadow for the rightful turn. 15? Number 15. That's the arts for 25 points, the arts. Name for the patron saint of sailors, you'll find the Roman Catholic shrine St. Anne de Beaupre in Montmorency County in what Canadian province? Quebec. Ontario? Quebec. Quebec. Oh, you didn't need the choices. You've got it. Well done. All right. You're in. Landmark churches now. For 10 points, 10 points. Composed of nine churches with onion-shaped domes, you'll find St. Basil's Cathedral in what Rome. world? No, Moscow. Moscow. And for 10 additional points, you'll find the largely Byzantine-style Roman Catholic Church, St. Mark's Basilica, in what Italian city? Rome. Venice. Venice. And finally, for just five points, just five points now, St. John the Divine Cathedral is the United States' largest cathedral. In what city will you find it? Chicago, Washington, D.C., or New York? 
Washington, D.C. I'm sorry, New York City. No points there, East Longmeadow. Williston, please. Number 10, please. That happens to be history for 20 points. In translation, the names of the three ships that he used on his first voyage were the little girl, the spotted mare, and the mother of Christ. Who? Christopher Columbus. Yes, the Nina, Pinta, and Santa Maria. All right, more exploration history now, 10 points. For his 1519 voyage around the world, he assembled five ships. Trinidad, his flagship, San Antonio, Concepcion, and the Victoria, and the Santiago, who? Magellan. Magellan, Ferdinand Magellan, yes. And in 1776, while standing aboard the Endeavor, he rediscovered the Sandwich Islands. Who? Cook. James Cook. Well done. East Long Meadow, please. Three. Number three. That will be history for 15 points. What was the name given to the system of obligations that bound lords and their subjects in Europe during the Middle Ages? The feudal system. The feudal system? The feudalism, the feudalist system, we'll take it, you're in. It's a revolution now, five points. With what event would you associate the interest-bearing treasury bonds known as assignats? That's A-S-S-I-G-N-A-T-S. -S -S. France? More specific, please. The French Revolution? The French Revolution, is it? Yes. The Glorious Revolution of 1689 to 16. 89, led the exile, led to the exile of what English king? James the first, James the second, James the first, or Charles the second? Charles. Charles the second. No, I'm sorry, James the second. With what European nation would you associate the October Revolution? Uh, Russia. Russia. Russia is it, yes, okay. Williston, please. 11. Number 11, please. Number 11, all right, that'll be literature for 25 points. Sherlock Holmes is to Sir Arthur Conan Doyle as who is to the fictional detective C. Auguste Dupin? Dashiell Hammett, Earl Stanley Gardner, Edgar Allan Poe, or Raymond Chandler? Hammond? No, is that, no, I'm sorry. Edgar no, Allan okay, Poe? Chant, um, pardon? Edgar Allan Poe. Edgar Allan Poe is correct. East Long Meadow High School gets the capitalization. We'll go to the screen, Judy Priest, thank you. Fictional detectives and their creators. I'll name the detective for five points. You tell me the author who created him. Philip Marlowe. Chandler? Correct, yes, Raymond Chandler. Charlie Chan. Biggers? Biggers, Biggers yes, Earl Dare Biggers, yes. Mike Hammer. Spillane? Mickey Spillane, yes. Travis McGee. Gould? No, that'd be John D. McDonald. How about Dick Tracy? Gould. That'd be Chester Gould. Nice way to end it. Okay, folks, with that, that ends our rounds of his school's match with the lightning round away, certainly to determine tonight's winner. Come on back. All right, this is being played just the way we like it. I'm sure just the way you like it. Again, the students may have a different opinion. 90-90, we're all knotted up. East Long Meadow her, uh, High School with a flurry there at the end that brought the score to a tie. Uh, tonight's category is um, America by the month. Here's the deal. Tell me the month associated with each of these events from American history or American culture. You got that? All set? Please put 90 seconds on the clock, Mr. Capalbo. Let's go. Flag day. East Long Meadow. April. No, June, you lose five. The Tournament of Roses Parade. East Long Meadow. January. Correct, yes. The Civil War Battle of Gettysburg. No one. July. John Glenn becomes the first American to orbit the Earth. February. The 1981 attempted assassination of Ronald Reagan. March. The Battle of Fort Sumter. April. Veterans Day. November. Somebody's got an answer to win. The Kentucky Derby. East Long Meadow. October. May. I'm sorry you lose five. The assassination of Robert Kennedy. Well, listen. Um, March. June, you lose five. The Battle of Lexington during the American Revolution. April, the death of John Adams and Thomas Jefferson. To listen. July. July is right, you got five. Neil Armstrong becomes the first man to walk on the moon. Well, listen. July. July is right, yes. VJ Day. No one, September. The Statue of Liberty is officially dedicated. 
October, St. Valentine's Day Massacre, East Long Meadow. February? Of course, yes. In New England, Arbor Day. East Long Meadow? April. Correct, yes. The Super Bowl. Williston? January. Or February, yes. The assassination of John F. Kennedy. November. The assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. East Long Meadow? February. No, it's April. I'm sorry you lose five. The fall of the Alamo. And with that, folks, I'll be back with the final score after some parting words from our sponsors. Well, what a match. As close as can possibly be, our final score has it 100 to 90 in favor of Willison Northampton High School. They pulled the upset tonight over a wonderful team from East Long Meadow High School. A kind of a tough lightning round to go out on. But guys, you were fantastic, this, these three appearances. Last Saturday night, scoring the highest score so far this season. So a job well, well done. Just came so doggone close. We, uh, it's so terribly uh, difficult to say goodbye. And, and to a great team like yours, we... We thank you so very much. The other bad news, we're all seniors, so we don't get to see you back next year. But good luck to you as you go on with your careers, and thank you so very, very much for being a part of our show. Thanks for being with us. Good night. Thanks. Well, congratulations, Williston Northampton High School. As I said, a very good team from East Long Meadow High School. You pulled the upset. They did score some uh, 290 or 80 points last Saturday night. Great team. So you got a lot to say for yourselves. You keep it on a roll now. You're back next Saturday night. Your competition will be Hopkins Academy from Hadley, Massachusetts. And I certainly want to invite each and every one of you to join us each and every Saturday night here for a school's match. What's now proudly brought to you by, by the good folks at Raymore and Flanagan Furnitures here in West Springfield and Springfield. Please join them. Uh, just stop at their stores, buy lots of their furniture, keep them associated with the program. We're glad to have them aboard. So uh, they support educational uh, endeavors all over Western New England. So we're proud to have them, proud to have them with us. So folks, join us again next Saturday night for a Schools Match Wits. For now, I'm John Barron. Good night. Good job.